All right, it is time for another Student of the Gun public episode, number 1163, Gun Beats Rock and Pepperball versus Pepperball, Pepperball Guns. Uh, and during the teaser, something else I wanted to mention, though, it was actually very cool. Uh, in the teaser that we did, we talked about the Battle Box Mission 92. The coolest thing in that box was the takedown bow. It's it is a survival bow or a takedown bow oh, yeah. or whatever. Uh, is it like a, a arrow bow or yeah, like a like, bow saw bow? No, no, no. It's a, it's like a, a bow with arrows, and you should have said you could use it for both. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can use it for both, but uh, yeah, you you put it together. It comes with a, an Allen wrench, and you can sit on the back. I sat on the back of the pickup truck, and it took me all of five minutes to do the whole thing. Just screw the screws in, and and. Uh, stand up and if you don't know how to string a longbow you really need to uh, watch a video or have someone show you how to do it uh it's it's easy once you you've strung a longbow right yeah okay yeah it's easy once you uh know how to do it now the trick with the uh regular bow like a longbow uh is if <laughs> with compound bows we all use the mechanical releases and stuff but with a longbow you just use your fingers and i found that after after i launched about 25 to 30 arrows that my fingers were like okay that's enough your, your finger my fingers like okay that is enough of that well you know with a regular longbow they have the finger tabs that you can yeah I know. you're shooting a lot right uh, yeah so what i'm saying so, if you're going to do that you want to go buy the finger tabs i and i owned some somewhere on planet earth <gasps> you know what I think I have a little box with archery tackle in it, and there might be finger tabs in there. I should get, I should find those because I've I've owned finger tabs for twenty five years or more. Uh, I didn't know about that when I was a little kid. When I was a little kid, I had a fiberglass longbow. Only it was a kid sized one, so it was only like you know, four feet long. Oh yeah. And I would go out in the in the back of the house in the garage uh, in Detroit and launch arrows into cardboard targets and stuff. And uh, yeah, when we moved away from that house, <laughs> the back wall of the garage had about 8,000 little arrowhead oh, dents in funny. it. <laughs> For me shooting through the cardboard yeah. and it hitting the back wall. And I, I, I don't know how my parents felt about that. But the good news is that garage is no longer there. It's gone. Is that a good so, news or is that well i mean sad news. yeah it's it doesn't matter i just washed that away that's 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 the past the past is the past and the future is the future so the future is us talking about well all the good stuff that we always talk about every week on student of the gun radio right after the introduction music Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Do you know what I realized I did not do and I should have done for that video that uh, Battle Box uh, Mission 92? I, I shot a stop motion video of me putting the uh, the cot up or not the cot, the hammock, putting up the hammock and the stop motion video only ended up being like eight or nine seconds, something like that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like if you're looking at it right now and you're like, oh, man, that's uh, you did perfect B-roll. Yeah, it's perfect B roll. What well, those strap those straps came with the hammock. Yeah, I come with it. Oh, that's yeah. Nice. So it's awesome. You know, a lot of hammocks don't come with the straps. Oh no, most of them are like, yeah, just use your own five fifty cord or your own rope or whatever. Yeah, but or, uh, I've used ratchet straps before and they work fine. Yeah, ratchet straps work good, but these are less heavy than oh, ratchet yeah. straps and take up less it's, space. It's like the a Ranger ratchet tourniquet versus a rat's tourniquet. Right. It's like they they both both work very well, but which one are you more likely to carry with you? Right. Yeah. So. What I should have done is I should have is done nothing. a stop motion of me sitting on the tailgate assembling the bow. The bow. Yeah. You I learned. Should, I should have done that. And I apologize to you guys for not doing that. 
But I did display the bow and I shot it. What is that it. big old knife right there? Which big old knife? Is that a big, uh, big old knife? That? Yeah. No, that's the that's, oh, the, that's the that's the riser. That's oh, the grip. Okay, okay. For the bow. Yeah. I thought you were holding a big old knife in your hand. All right, moving on. It is time for uh, well, this is when I remind you, all of you freaks and freakettes out there, if you're watching us on the Discord channel, if you're in student of the gun dot com slash Discord and you've got a question or a comment or a concern or whatever, go ahead and throw it in there. Go ahead and throw it in there. Yes, indeed. All right. Hey, did you guys uh, last Friday, a week ago, um, did you guys enjoy? Uh, it was Paul Markle Friday on the airwaves. So we had a grad program bonus hour with me and Jared, of course. And then I was on Mark Walter's Armed American Radio Show. And I was also on with Bill Frady and Lock and Load. Lock and Load Radio. And if you missed it, you can go back, thanks to the beauty of the Internet, and uh, you can go back and listen to those shows. And if you like it, when I jump on with other hosts and, and talk the talk, and, and uh, sometimes, sometimes I flabbergast the hosts. <laughs> That's why they bring me on. It's like wow! I didn't expect that. Oh, uh, like mouth. Mark's Mark's uh, engineer, Mark's uh, engineer. He's like, uh, when it, and he he's at the when I call into the show, he answers and he's like, "What's up, hippie?" So he knows. He knows now. <laughs> All right, let's do a Duracoat finish firearm of the week. Brought to you by Duracoat. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We're going to talk about metal this week. We're going to talk about Dura Metal, then the Heavy Metal Collection. And uh, I wonder how many of you guys out there, use guys, using guys, how many of you guys know the origin of the term heavy metal? Didn't exist forever. The term rock and roll was actually coined by a DJ uh, in Cleveland. I can't remember who it was, but it was a DJ in Cleveland used the term rock and roll for the first time, and it stuck. And then we had heavy metal, and there became a genre. Does that make you happy, Zach? Gender. Hold, you hey. just respected a whole gender yes. of rap. A genre. Yeah, a whole gender of rap. Uh, a genre of music which came to be known as heavy metal. Now, for this is this is the double jeopardy question. How many of you who out there in the audience and the uh, Discord audience knows the original or the origin of the term heavy metal? Where did it first appear and who first used it? Yeah, I'll go did ahead and give to, you was guys. Was it the movie? Um, no, no, no. It was way before that. Way before that. It was, it was, it, yeah, the movie Heavy Metal, there's actually two songs on the soundtrack, one by Sammy Hagar and one by Don Felder. Who knows who Don Felder is? You guys even remember Don Felder? Don Felder actually was the who, guitar player for uh, Metallica. For the Eagles. You're dumb. Same thing. You're stupid. But uh, anyway, Dura Metal, M E T L trademark. Uh, in case you guys don't know, they actually have a. Duracoat finish. It's called Dura Metal. And when you put it on your guns, when you put it on your gats, it actually looks like it has metal flake because it does. Because they put pulverized metal into the uh the Duracoat. Pulverized. Pulverized metal. metal. So you can get uh Alice Copper, Bronzy Osborne, Golden Maiden, Gray Sabbath. Guns and Rose Gold, Marilyn Bronson, uh, Twisted Silver, and Van Golden. <laughs> I like those. those are fun. <laughs> so you can do that. You can do that if you want your. Uh, I did a gray Sabbath gun a while back and posted lots of photos of it. You remember which gun it was? Yeah, it was a little, um, 
the pistol that has the side folder and so on and so forth. Oh, nice. Remember? It's actually right there in that case. Which one? Uh, in White that case right there. The black one? That, or the, yeah, the black one. Okay. In the black one. I'm glad it wasn't a green one because there's multiples. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. All right. So that is, uh, I just wanted to remind you guys that uh, we haven't talked about that in quite a while, but uh, the, the Dura Metal, if you want something to look really unique, uh, you can Dura Metal it. And it is available right now from Dura Coat Firearm Finishes. Do we get an answer? Do we get an answer in the Discord as to the origin of the term heavy metal? No. What? I am they're waiting with sorely breath. disappointed oh. in my audience. Wait, Doug Arnold's typing. S- Stephen Offer is born to be Yes. Loud. Yes. Thank you very I knew I could trust Doug Arnold. I knew I could I could uh see Doug Arnold was like a, a metalhead in high school, I'm sure he was. He probably still is. Yeah, it's from the uh the song Born to Be Wild by Steppenwolf. I could see I'm surprised I said it incorrectly to see if you would correct me, but you didn't. I was yes, born to be wild by Steppenwolf. But uh, uh, I could see Doug as being either a hardcore metalhead or all he listens to is classical music. <laughs> there is no in between. Uh, Steppenwolf is actually there's a, a a a character. There's a Marvel character. Is it Marvel or? No, or DC. DC, because oh, he was the bad guy from Justice League. Yeah, yeah, Steppenwolf. He was born to be wild. Uh, yes, indeed. The Steppenwolf character actually dates back to 1972. Now, the original Steppenwolf uh, dates back to 1927 in Germany, and it was Der Steppenwolf uh, from a novel, but... We're not going to get too far into that, but anyway. So the term, the, the thing is, heavy metal, it is out there, and you can get Dura Metal and coach your guns and be a happy camper. How's that sound? Sound good to you? All right. Good job. All right. SDS Imports. Yes, indeed. SDS Sierra Delta Sierra. Thank you very much to Sierra Delta Sierra Imports for being the title sponsor of Student of the Gun Radio. You guys are righteous. And I hope, speaking of righteous, I would hope that my audience – yeah, you guys out there pointing at you. I would hope that you would uh, somehow have expressed your appreciation to those guys uh, for well, sponsoring the show. The ultimate form of expressing your appreciation is to go buy some of their products. They're very, fairly, very fairly priced. They're fairly priced. Say that yes. 10 times fast. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but let them know. You know. Say, hey, student of the gun sent me yachts and uh, then they'll know you say that to every single local deer, dealer that you go in and actually yep. buy guns from say student say, of the hey, gun, student sent, gun me. sent me <laughs> they're, they're gonna eventually like, they're gonna be like what what who what is this why student? do these people keep does saying it, that all right if you guys out in the audience does it dumbfound you after 10 years that there are people out there that don't know what student of the gun is or are not familiar with us no is, is that dumbfound you You're like it's not so i hope that there's a whole say, lot where have you been? I hope there are a lot because if if we reach everybody that we could possibly reach, then there's no room for growth, and that's not good. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right, moving right along. Boop, 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 boop. I saw, I saw a Maymay the other day. <laughs> uh oh. Is it about the loner? Look. They updated their website. When did that happen? Thank are, you for your interest. Are you at least 18 years old? Neat. That is, that is so dumb. What happens if I say no? You're right. not old enough. It sends you back to Google. That's so dumb. Wait, did I just bone myself? <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> you might have. Uh, I hope it asks every time. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, there uh, you're. We're good. Yep. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I am over 18. <laughs> Uh, that's one of like, the things that people don't really think about on this site it's high dash point firearms.com hi dash point firearms.com mm-hmm. um, is that you can actually shop the accessories for the high point firearms directly from the website here you don't have to go to a local dealer um, to get your stuff 
Although I do, if you have the time and the, the inclination <laughs> to do that, I do recommend going there because you can hear some cool stories at the local gun shops. Yeah, it's a cool story, bro. And you're, yeah, <laughs> cool and you're supporting your local people. So uh, do that. But you can go directly to the site and get stuff. If you like to just have it shipped to your door, like if you're an over-the-road truck driver, for instance, and you need to order something, and it'll be back at your house when you get there. You can do that directly yeah. from high-pointfirearms.com. So you know what's what uh, I need to put up an a hole brought me there. back, like brought me back, uh, like t- it took me back. I saw a meme and it was a bunch of people gathered around a an old white tube monitor, and it's <laughs> no way. It said me in uh, 2004 watching people actually die on Rotten.com. <laughs> <laughs> what is rotten.com you don't even know oh man yeah rotten.com was a site where you could go and actually and get watch videos uh back in the day yes you could watch uh surveillance video oh, yeah. dash cam video oh. of people actually dying uh so it's like badge cams now yeah yeah like, except that you could see it Unlike now, where they censor everything, right? Where they censor everything or they pixelate everything or whatever. You know, back then, and this was so you could watch actual like combat footage because it, it, it was going in, in uh, you know, 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah. Uh, you could see in 11, 12. footage from the global war on terror. Because like real uncensored footage. Yeah, real truth, uncensored. You can look at the truth footage. And Can't be uh, having that now. No, no. And how many of you guys have forgot about Rotten.com and have ever considered that it was it was too true or too uncensored and they couldn't have that? They're like, mm, nah, no, can't have that. Now, one thing that I'm getting increasingly worried about is how do I how do I keep my kids from seeing stuff like that before they're ready to really digest what's happening mm. and with the internet the way it is you can pretty much find anything that you want to right how do i as a parent and those of you that are parents and have done this in the digital age let me know what your solutions are because i haven't really found other than blocking like on my network at home i can do parental controls and control each device and whatnot but that's only at my home that's not like on cellular service or whatever so i'm interested to know now, my kids are super young right now, so maybe there will be a different solution when they get old enough to use devices. Yeah, and whatnot. by the time they're older, there's going to have been an EMP and there won't be anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> keep them off. We the don't internet. have to worry about that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's possible. We're my friend. All right, we're going to. So, all right. When you figure it out, let me know. Dang it. All right. Come on, guys. All right. Juxy.com. We already talked about them. They're there and you can watch the Battle Box 90, Mission 92 opening and you can see me. Uh, laying in a cot, and you can see me shooting a survival. You mean a military bed? Yeah, I'm sorry, a hammock. You got me all screwed up. Now. A military. I'm going to cut up this military bed. Oh. Yeah, for those of you who missed the pre-show, during the pre-show we were talking about uh, the the television show Forged in Fire and uh, how someone they need. Uh, I don't know, like Dale Die, or they need a. Uh, a military expert to just give them a quick like hint about terminology and so forth. But they used to have what is faces of death? Oh, faces of death was movie. It was a video um, videotapes that you could rent uh, from the NC 17 where people actually died. Like you could see people actually dying in, you know, people who died in car crashes, people who died doing stupid stuff like like trying to pet the lion in the zoo. Or, so you're like on a Friday night. What am I going to do this weekend? Uh, let's go rent a movie so we can watch people die on. Yeah. It, oh, sounds yeah. like fun. That was, that. There, there was lot, lots of those faces of death. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and you could go to Blockbuster Video. Now, that most of them were wow, humans like are sick NC, NC-17. Yeah, uh, you'd have to ask for it. Yeah, you know, they wouldn't put it out on the shelf. It's like yeah. back with the porn videos. So you have sex and death in the same section. Mm, I don't think they put those in the porn section. Oh. The, the the curtain, 
yeah, the curtain. This is adults only. Yeah, no, no kids go behind this the half curtain or the, or the the swinging doors, the the like the, the Western saloon. bar doors. Yeah, remember the Western bar doors at, at, in uh, at City oh. News oh, in yeah. In, yeah. in Worcester. Yeah, they had the adult section, and it was it was <laughs> back in the corner. You could, and you had to go through the swinging bar doors to get in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, Doug confirmed. <laughs> Black Sabbath, Megadeth, and Old Metallica. So that's Metalhead right there, buddy. There you go. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. All right. So there you go. Let's go ahead and move on to the next thing, which is me uh, being quiet and you freaks listening louder. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. So I just... When I hit those buttons mm-hmm. during the thing, the, I just re- that was the first time I ever had to hit the mute button. The cough button. And I didn't know if that was the right one. Oh, yeah. The red okay. Yeah. Re- the red one's the cough button. What's and- the green one? It doesn't doesn't do. We we were trying to figure that out before I think, but anyway. No, I know what it does. It shuts off your headphones. It doesn't shut off my headphones. I can still hear. Yeah. Uh, that's probably because your headphones are plugged into a different jack. Uh, shuts off mine. That's weird. No, actually, I think it mutes you to... No, this, the red one is the cough button, so yeah. it mutes you to the world. Yeah, we do that. That's good. I did the right thing. So we're playing the uh, we're playing a little game called Jared Doesn't Know What Buttons Work. <laughs> what the buttons what do. Button are these? What I the buttons know. do on the, yeah. on what the that board. Do. <laughs> oh, you never know what you're going to hear. You don't. You come here and you're like, oh, I know what they're going to talk about. I read the show notes. No, this all right. Dot com thing, and then the the faces of death. It's like it just you humans. Actually, are the, sick the, and twisted. The rotten dot com thing was that's actually where I went. Yeah, uh, to get a lot of sources or whatever. Well, no, to to actually see what what's what. For instance, the good for uh, for instance is is people have all this this these fantasies about what happens to humans when they get shot. Yeah, with handguns or shotguns or rifles yeah, or whatever, that blows their lungs out. And yeah, they, oh, it blows their lungs out, man. And the, uh, I, I, the doctor told me a nine millimeter. Blah, blah, blah. No, but you could actually, if you wanted to, you could go there and you say, okay, this is actually what how people react when they're shot, um, with handguns. You know, yeah. you could see people getting shot and then continuing to to do stuff. So. But uh, we're not talking about that anymore. We're going to talk about Brownells Bullet Points brought to you by our good friends at Brownells.com. Yes, indeedy do. Yes, indeedy do. Uh, Our good buddies at Brownells wanted me to remind you. Well, I I always talk about uh, in November and December, we talk about Winter Gun Project your winter gun projects that's right and uh, if you don't have a winter gun project well get on the stick man and get yourself a winter gun project you know that's it's dark what are you gonna do go into your shop build a gun you can you're an american you're allowed so uh christensen arms has a huge line of gun parts barrels actions pieces parts and so on and so forth and uh if you would like to construct the one the one that i went ahead and picked out and i threw the link in there has a carbon fiber barrel it's It's a car yeah it's a carbon selection fiber uh and it's got the bolt and the actions if you'd like to to build yourself a a six five creedmoor get me get me a creedmoor man Got any of that Creed Moor? Uh, you want to build yourself a six five Creed Moor or a six Creed Moor or a three oh eight or whatever. Just and also, right now, 
uh, if you use the promo code 30 off 250, that's a heck of a promo code 30 off 250, you get $30 off any order uh, over $250. So there's that. That's righteous. Wait, that tells me that they updated their system. Mm, that that one? Yeah. Remember? That's, yeah, because yeah. you, before you yeah, could three. only use three. Now we can do something. So we could use a promo code SOTG now. That's right, buddy. So what's up with that? What's up, Mr. What's up? So yeah, uh, if you guys are, uh, if you're into the Winter Gun Projects or, you know, if you're on socialist media and you're feeling froggy, or if you're in the Liberty Mastermind group and you're feeling froggy, you could always post pictures of your your project guns. Yeah, you could do that. Now, I'm not going to give you anything. On every single platform. Yeah. And then on the Discord, where you should be watching live right now, if you're not, go to studentthegun.com slash Discord. Yep. You do it in the Facebook, Liberty Mastermind. You could do it pretty much anywhere that you go that we are. It allows you to post a picture. Yeah, you can even send it to us in an email. What is the name of the Surefire Flashlight? That, Still oh, this one. Tactician. The Tactician. Yeah. There's a Defender. And there's a Tactician. Yes, indeed. The Surefire Tactician, which was made with the input via the input of our. I'm going to give it a single. Dearly player. departed friend, James Yeager. So that you can. Hold it up and show it to people. There we it's go. A single cam. There we go. Oh, there it went. There it went. It's gone. It's so powerful <laughs> that it it blew back out of his hand. <laughs> the Holy recoil cow. knocked it out of my hand. Wow. Oh. <laughs> oh, and they're so popular that they're actually out of stock. So if you find one in stock, you might want to grab it. Like quick pass in a hurry. One of the things that's unique about the tactician and James had him do this on purpose is that the, the light is up. The, the, the bezel uh, is up, not down. Most of the uh, flashlights are bezel down uh, and they did that on purpose. Well, one of the things is, I don't know about you guys, but if I carry it in jeans and it's bezel down, every time I sit in a car, my, my hip crease I have these massive hips and thighs. Uh, my massive hips and thighs. Uh, uh, my hip crease hits the button, activates it, and then I burn a hole through my leg. <laughs> if you don't know, you don't know. If you've never oh, yeah. experienced the hot, like, why is my leg on fire? Like, <laughs> one, why is one, my two, leg three, so lithium hot? battery flashlight is gets pretty hot. A double one, two, three yeah. lithium battery flashlight gets very hot. Uh, you know, a, a 500, 600, 700 lumen thousand lumen light you're like ah there we go what's going on <laughs> you know i should do that uh burn your leg off no no what i should do is i should i've been i was wondering because you know how if you take a you know a really bright flashlight you set it down on a table and it's turned on it'll it'll scar yeah it'll leave a burn scar yeah uh in the tabletop i wonder if if you could just go ahead and start a fire if you had the the correct kindling and stuff with your, huh. I don't I know. Mean, it gets hot, it, and it gets hot enough to leave a little burn scar on your table. So I mean, that's that's hot, right? Yeah. The answer is maybe, but then you have two things to worry about: one, getting your flashlight back, and two, what are the odds of those batteries exploding? Oh, it's getting it. You're, it you're back. not leaving it in the fire. You're just starting an ember, essentially. What are you talking like, about? Crazy. He's, okay, okay. Uh, like explain the process to me of you starting. The, are you setting it on top of the kindling? Are you pointing it at the kindling? What the, what the hell are you doing? With well, it? first of all, it wouldn't it wouldn't be kindling? It'd be tinder. The thing in the fire that makes well, it go big. Yeah. The the gist of it is that if you're dumb enough to leave your flashlight in there long enough for the flames to engulf it, then you probably don't deserve the flashlight. You don't deserve anyway. the flashlight. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like, have, like what is the yeah, what would be the hypothetical process of starting? Yeah, you the fire usually with the have like 60 to 120 seconds before there's actual flames and once you get the ember just, going you yeah once like you, blow on it it just give starts it a bunch of air, smoking yeah. and then you yeah, <laughs> yeah but I, I here's the thing i don't care if there's flames looking off of it or not if it's hot enough to start a fire you probably don't want to grab it no the the he, he doesn't understand what i literally understand. don't understand so, which is why i'm so asking the, the glass part of the Do flashlight fla that yeah. he dropped it gets really hot there, but it, the whole handle doesn't get very hot. Yeah. Just where the light is. So just you would turn light. it on and stick it down, flesh, flashlight part down, down. into the, the tinder kindling? 
So it would if you leave it. This is actually really good because there's probably a lot of people in Zach, here. Zach, do you have your flashlight on you? Hold on. Yeah, it's right there's here. A, there's a lot of people in here that probably haven't experienced this, and I just thought that you, everybody that carries flashlight, has experienced it. It's not true, clearly, because Zach carries flashlight every day. So if you take a flashlight and you turn it on and you set it um, lens or flashlight down on a table, and you leave it there long enough, it'll leave a ring. So dad's going to show you, but you can't see it on the camera. So it's actually, if you turn it on and you set it on the table face down like this, you do the double change. The, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do, do the two shots, set it down like this boop, and you yeah. leave it. Then it'll leave Perfect. a fire right behind the uh, thermos yeah, the bottles, all the stuff there. Can you see it now? That bottle gone. Move, Move the bottle. bottle. Throw Thank it over the floor. There we go. Just like that. Okay. If you do it like that and the light is on and I leave it there long enough, it'll burn the thing like this little circle right here. Don't do it. I don't want to burn another one. It's not going to take that. But so it will <laughs> leave do it like a ring second. right there that is burned through the wood. So theoretically, you might, you might be able to use that on tinder or kindling um, to get it or tinder to get it started. Yeah, tinder. And get the ember going. And then I don't know if Zach... If you remember doing flint and steel at camp, but what happens is once you get the ember into the tender, it it it, it smokes. Like, it take it, yeah, it takes and it starts glowing and smoking. You got it. But you it doesn't just hit, it doesn't continue to turn into a fire unless you baby it. So the goal with the flashlight would be to get the ember going, just to get an ember, and then you pick it up and you blow on it or whatever to get the fire going. It's like it's like I, doing I know how a fire uh, works, but okay, thank you for explaining the rest of just it. Just doing a bow drill. It's like doing a bow drill. When you do a bow drill, people think that that cavemen used a bow drill to start a fire, and they would like do it until a flame appeared. Yeah, that's not no, the flame is never going to appear. What you get is you get a, a what they call what did what did um uh. Amanda or Samantha or whoever it was. Yes. What did she call it? A puck or a puff or a punk or whatever. Some punk. A poof. Yeah. Uh, so basically, it's just a little glowing ember, and you, you've got to get that hot. Uh, um, yeah, I, I wanted to make sure that we explained that because I was at, looking back to remember our buddy EJ Owens when he was talking about the thin blue line thing. Yeah. He didn't know what it was and he walked into a store and he was like, what does that mean? And they treated him like an idiot. Cause he didn't know. Mm -hmm. like, ah, you don't know what that is. It's like, clearly I don't friggin' know, or I wouldn't have asked the question. Right. So I was making sure that we got that answered for everybody. So, yes. So there you go. And you the, the whole reason that I'm talking about this light is because they, well, they used to have them on brownells.com, but now they're currently out of stock. Oh, uh, but if you if you find the tactician, uh, it it is, it's everything you want and everything you know everything you need, without a bunch of crap that you don't need. So there you go. All right, that that is our Brownells bullet points for the week. We talked about uh, getting your winter gun project started, uh, and the Christensen arms, barrels, and parts, and actions, and all that stuff. And you know, there's you even a, a link in the show notes. You know, what you could do that. Could you do? could go to pocketlifesaver.com. I pick, could go pick to pocket up one of those pocket lifesavers, open it up, use some of the gauze or a tampon if if you. Uh, we don't do that anymore. I, I'm not done with what I was okay. going to say. Or a tampon if you're one of the OG people and you got a kit before the internet started complaining about tampons. You could take that and you could use the flashlight and, uh -huh. thing and see if I it works. <laughs> I spelled it wrong. <laughs> Uh, I put live saver. Dot com, pocketlifesaver.com. You could get a limit kit. That's right. You could get a limit kit. Is there gauze it, in the limit kit? Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. Duh. There's so gauze for a total in the, investment yeah. of $15. Yeah. You do that. Uh, if you wait or for Black less Friday if you uh, order hint, hint. that too. Uh, or less if you use the, si the code sidekick when you order a full size kit. That's oh, right. Nice. Yeah. That's right. Speaking All of right. stores and shopsotg.com and pocketlifesaver.com, I think that we've got something to tell you. Yes, indeed, we do. Mouse died for a second. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> shopsotg.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. 
All that, plus the Pimp Hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed you do. Check out ShopSOTG today, but way more importantly than that, make sure you ship out, ship out, check out ShopSOTG.com next weekend because Black Friday is coming. We are almost there, and I am very excited. Today's going to, uh, today. This year's going to be another great year, and of course, we're bringing back the fan uh, favorite of the Battle Box. Not Battle Box. Too many boxes. Black Friday mystery. Box. Mystery. Mystery Box. Yeah. The Black Mystery Box. The Black Friday Box is once again making its triumphant return. Uh, <laughs> it, it'll be available to anybody who places an order on Black Friday weekend, or if you it, don't want to place an order, you can send a handwritten letter to our P.O. Box, and that will count as an entry to possibly get the Black Friday Box, because legal reasons. <laughs> Is the um is the is the Black Friday mystery box is that the reigning defending champion? Mm. Yes. Okay. Just one Black Friday Absolutely. mystery box. Yep. So, so yeah, we the- we love you guys so much that we're not clogging your inbox. We're willing to lose the profits until Black Friday, huh? And we're not clogging your inbox with the sales at the beginning of November first. Oh yeah, yeah, I've already gotten. I have already received Black Friday sale everything yeah things so, yeah. which when people I, are like oh it's coming up soon i'm kind of like it's like this is you know, why don't you start in september or august nice. or whatever like is there any moratorium on that why not uh, just there will start be. in january just have That's all right. well, year just, black just, friday year everything is 50 percent off all the time why don't we just go with that why not yeah. right right why don't we just make people happy why don't we just put a uh a, a dedicated all year long christmas section in walmart just all year long I'm sick of people trying to sell holidays eight weeks before the actual holiday. Well, it it's not special or not even eight anymore. weeks, four months. It, if it's Christmas all the time, then it then it does. It's not special. They're putting out Halloween candy and Family Dollar at the end of July. And yeah, in August they're like, you better hurry up. It's Which only is why we're not weeks. bothering. Which well, is why we're not doing Black Friday stuff three weeks before Black Friday. <laughs> but trust me, it'll be worth it. Black well, Friday weekend. This, this goes out on great. the 16th, so you're actually uh, only like nine days away. Yeah, but people were doing Black Friday stuff on like November oh, yeah. 3rd. So, you I know. know. All right, moving on. Moving on. We got. Moving yeah, on. Go for it. It is time for a Student of the Gun Homeroom brought to you by our good buddies at CrossbreedHolsters.com. You know what I really appreciate about crossbreedholsters.com? What? I appreciate the fact that the company has grown so much that they can do cool stuff. You know, oh, wow, that's like cool. they have a custom shop now. And we talked about this a couple of years ago. They did the Taco Tuesday special custom holsters with the taco, you know, on. Yeah. and uh, what's funny is we were we were at the shop a few years ago, a couple of years. I think it was last year. I guess it was last year. And we and I was laughing about the taco thing and and they thought I meant, oh, like the that special no, I was like, no, the, the taco holster man. <laughs> yeah, they've grown to the point now that they can do cool things and, and not have to worry. Because you know, some companies are like, we 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 can't put time and resources into anything that we're not gonna sell a million of. If if we're not going to sell ten thousand of these specific units, we're not going to do it. Now I like this. This is cool. But uh, but your enemy will see you in the dark clearly. So oh, yeah, yeah, just yeah, can't yeah. That. it's like that's why I don't use tritium sights on my guns because the enemy will see me. <laughs> It'll give away my position. Oh man, you know that's a thing, right? You know that there there are RIAs who have posted comments. They sat down, used their fingers to create a comment on a public forum saying how they don't use tritium sites because they will give away your position. Oh, everybody's got their thing. So drive on. That's true. Some people got, they, they, some people need better hobbies. It leaves more tritium sites for our people. That's right. More tritium for us. 
But uh, if you go to crossbreedholsters.com right now, you will see that they have a special 80s vibe retro looking holster set that you can buy if you want to. If you don't want to, don't buy it. I don't care. Doesn't make any difference to me. Uh, but they are the sponsor of the homeroom, and the homeroom is all about being what? Dangerous on demand. Yes, dangerous on demand. Hey, quick question for you suckers out there in the in, in listening to the show. Would you buy a student of the gun holster? Like with our logos and stuff on it, a cool design custom shop holster. I'm interested to know if it's worth with the icons. Yeah, with the icons, it would be have to be like a cool design though, not just the icon on it. Well, if you put if you put the icon and then you mixed in student for life. Yeah, student yes. for life icon, student yeah. for life. But icon. it would have to be like a like you know how I'm looking at this '80s one right now. Yeah, and you see where they did the the logo right there, right? But then there's this cool stuff around it, it makes it look cool. It doesn't have to be that color. It would be the brand colors with the icon and whatnot, but. Uh, I'm interested to know if you guys that are listening would buy one of those because if I get enough responses, I'll go to Crossbreed and say, hey, I've got this many people that said that they'll buy one. Out of those people, it's probably a 10% that'll actually spend the money on it. So so here you you go. Let's do that. You bags of douches (laughs) out there. Yes, yeah, I'll wear it if you give it to me for yeah, free. Yeah, there's like, there are a certain number of bags of douches who are like, yeah, I'll buy. I sure do like that idea. Yeah. And then we they do it, and they're like, well, will you buy one? If it's if you're gonna send it to me for free, no, we, that's that's not how that works. That's not how any of this. That old lady told you on the commercial, man. If you that's not that's yeah. not how that works. I unfriend. That's not how any of this works. That's pretty I funny. Unfriend you. That's right. But let's talk about being dangerous on demand. So about two weeks ago, was it two weeks ago? I think so. Yeah, I think somebody it was two weeks ago. somehow the pepper ball lunacy nonsense came up. Yeah. And and, and, and this is exactly why I posed the question. Of, question was. Do you want to ask it? Yeah, I'll, want... I'll just ask it because as Dad just said, he has very strong opinions about the pepper ball gun, and I was just wondering. Uh, are you fundamentally opposed to the existence of the pepper ball gun? Does the fact that there is a paintball gun like thing that shoots pepper balls with gas offend you to your core and you think it shouldn't hap- exist? Or what? what is your issue with it? My issue with it is that it, they are sold and marketed as replacements for firearms. They're not sold and marketed as in addition to They're sold and marketed as replacements for firearms. They're trying to convince consumers, you don't need to all the dangers and risks that that surround gun buying, and and you don't want that. So you're going to meet deadly force from an attacker that's attacking you with deadly force. You're going to meet it with a pepper ball gun. With less than lethal force. Less than lethal. Yeah. Not a good idea. See, and, and the... People are like, oh, well, we're just trying to make money, man. We're trying to cash in on the on the ignorance of the American gun buyer. Like, okay. It's, fear. it's fear-based marketing. Oh, uh, so that's my problem with it. My problem with it is that rather than be honest with people, you know, when, when I was a became a police officer I don't know, a thousand years ago, uh, back before the Internet, when I became a police officer back before the Internet, and this, there was this new thing was called oleoresin capsicum or oc and the street name is pepper spray so yes i was there i was there when uh i'm like uh who's the elf king he says you don't know i was there i was there when when man failed yeah i was there when pepper spray when oleoresin capsicum when it first became a thing right i was there at the very beginning and you know what we didn't do we didn't issue cans of pepper spray to police officers and take away their guns we didn't tell them well you don't need guns anymore because if you encounter a bad person just spray them with this stuff no we didn't do that because we taught people that there was a difference between lethal force and less than lethal force 
And I was, I remember when the pepper ball things first came about there, they've been around for a long time. Uh, they, they first came out and what they essentially did was they just took commercially available recreational sport pepper ball guns, you know, with the big hoppers and stuff. Big paintball and, guns. Yeah. Basic paintball guns. And, uh, and they, filled they just they modified it a little bit so that it would be tactical or whatever but it was essentially just a glorified paintball gun and they filled it with pepper balls and they're like hey cops you know if you're if there's ever riots or whatever just go out and like and uh, shoot people with paintballs or but they're pepper balls and i remember that and then they said mm. the problem with that is it's pneumatic uh and so you've got to you're going to store these things, right? They're just going to be sitting around. But the problem is, like, for instance, the problem with the pepper ball guns is they're CO2 powered. So you have to ask yourself, am I going to activate the CO2 cartridge so that it's ready to go when I need it? Or am I going to wait until I need it? And then when I need it, I'll activate the CO2 cartridge. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you know anything. I, I've been shooting CO2 powered BB guns since I was a little kid. Um, once you activate it, you only have so much time, and then that thing's just gonna it's gonna lose its power, right? So, are you planning to activate the CO2 cartridge, pack your pepper ball gun in your bag or your pocket, or heck, they sell freaking holsters for them, uh, and then just walk around? hoping that everything's good and then when you need it you're going to whip it out and shoot pepper balls at the bad guy or right. whip this out excuse me why and I'll whip this in addition out. to that one of the things that we know from data is that i'll use the instance of the the, the police chick that drew a taser and or i drew a gun instead of a taser recently yeah so even if you do decide to carry a pepper pepper ball gun and a pistol without enough training you're setting yourself up for failure when you're you could potentially and you are more likely and most likely to draw your gun instead of the pepper ball gun because you've spent more time drawing that gun than you have the pepper ball gun and it it's it's mental gymnastics in the moment it's like dad's analogy of the sculpture the sculptor Rather than adding more stuff for you to figure out and think about in your brain to make decisions, the the more that you can remove from that sculpture, the more perfect it is going to be. So it, if you have less things, the fundamental four, lethal, sharp, bright, medical, you have those four things and you go through the process of, you, know, you go through training and you learn how to use the stuff. Instead of adding more mint things that you're going to have to do mental gymnastics around more hurdles that you're going to have to jump over in the moment in the process, then if you sculpt that away, get really good with the four lethal sharp bright metal medical, the fundamental four, then you're going to be better off with those. Yeah. The, the, my, my big problem with pepper ball guns is the deceptive marketing. Uh, the fact that they sell them, and they push them to people. And of course, they're not pushing them to large, physically fit, strong men. Yeah. They're pushing them to grandmas and women and, you know, whatever. People who actually need a lethal tool to cover the gap, you know, the, the uh, disparity of force gap, they need that. And they're like, well, you're a woman and you don't really want to carry a gun because you're scared of guns. So here, carry this pepper ball gun. Oh, Doug just sent me an article on the chick. Her name was Kim Potter. She was sentenced to two years in prison for killing Dante Wright. Then she's the one that drew the ta the gun instead of the taser. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So and then like. The, the another problem with pepper ball guns, you're like, oh, they make them orange and they make them yellow and they make them dump -a -dump and like, OK, uh, is people they look like guns and they're shaped like guns, but people don't treat them like guns. They don't treat them like guns. So what they do is they just leave them laying around like if I had if you had a real live loaded gun, you wouldn't leave it laying around. Right. You're like, no, that would be stupid. 
but people will treat pepper ball guns or whatever they won't treat them like firearms because it's not really a firearm and no one's actually going to die so i can just stash it here leave it there whatever uh you can't fool yourself and this deceptive advertising of the pepper ball deal and you're like yeah but i thought you were a big proponent of oc pepper spray i am but a pepper ball is a single projectile and if you miss it's way easier to miss with you're like and, and you get what like five or six of them or something like that it's just look here's the deal unless you are a corrections officer or riot just leave the pepper ball guns for the riot control guys it's better options just just yeah better options you're you're way better off just getting a can of fox oc and throwing it in your pocket you know if, if you're that. yeah if you're really concerned about having a less than less than lethal option and here's the great thing you're never going to mistake a can of fox a two ounce or three ounce can of fox oc for a gun yeah you're not going to like reach in and say oh i i pulled out my gun i thought it was going to be my canister of pepper spray i was so confused no um yeah fox oc uh and you think why do you why do you promote fox because it's the, the shiznit okay that's weird all right <laughs> uh, we good yeah i went to my search engine and i typed in fox oc and it's got some some uh what are those people that you're not supposed to talk to or engage zach furries yeah <laughs> oh god <laughs> yep all right that makes sense <laughs> you, you want to stick a thing in your your rectum so that you have a tail. <laughs> moving on so dad do you think that there is any place for uh do you think there is any place for pepper ball gu pepper ball guns in private society no no not, no no it's no. over no. what about like a teenager who can't carry a gun no still no no it's still a, a less it, it still looks like a gun yeah um you're you're a can of Fox OC yes is is the the three ounce can the standard fist size can is twenty two dollars and ninety nine cents get get two or three or four of those and have them everywhere you go put okay. them in your unless you're in New your Jersey. purse your pocket yeah well then you can't don't go them. to New Jersey um oh, I'm sorry you're unable yeah carry them you're unable you know they, they frown upon it unallowed but, uh, yeah, you're unallowed disallowed you've been it. disallowed, disallowed yeah. yeah you're able but you're not allowed yeah exactly so all right so there we go i guess yeah so they no do not buy pepper ball guns for teenagers because first of all i was a teenager and if i'd had a pepper ball gun <laughs> my bros would have hated me oh, yeah because uh, i'd have been like zing walk. i just throw in an option so uh, yeah no just spend the 25 bucks get a can of fox oc uh get a couple cans and move on with your life uh, there you go if you had a teenager i would buy them a really good flashlight and oc and tell them to carry that that's what i would do that's what i would do all right let's go ahead and move on and this is a uh um, well, it's lethal versus lethal, but when you bring a rock to a gunfight, mm, yeah. So we got a story here from how are we doing on time there, Jack? Oh, we got plenty of time to take to go through this story. Okay. Well, what what's the time? What is the time, Kenneth? What's uh, the frequency, about Kenneth? Fifty-four minutes. Okay, that's the, the frequency, Kenneth. So we've got a uh, we've got a story here from wjla.com, Oakton. Oakton is apparently a suburb of Virginia. It's a suburb of, uh, it's in Fairfax County, which is in the, Fairfax. I almost said, shh, shh, it's in the not good part of Virginia. Uh, Fairfax County is in the not good part of Virginia. So Oakton homeowner, what do they do? Go ahead, Jared. <sighs> Oakton homeowner shoots and kills intruder who struck him with stick and rock. This guy was playing the sticks and stones game. Yep. Words hurt worse. Yeah. Detectives with the Fairfax County Police Department spent hours at the Oakton house Thursday, where they say a homeowner shot and killed an intruder Wednesday evening. So this is December 9th. 
So it's just last week. Yep. It's still a very, very active investigation, but preliminary. Oh, pre- prelimin- preliminarily, we are investigating this as a self-defense fatal shooting. Second Lieutenant James Curry with the Fairfax County Police Department said on the winds, on the scene Wednesday night, hmm. police identified the man who was killed Friday as 24-year-old Eduardo Santos of Herndon. They say hmm. it's unclear why he walked up to that particular home at about 6 p.m. Wednesday. Police do not believe that the homeowner knew the man. Hmm. I always wondered that, like, you know, reading your, um, is it five strategies or seven strategies? Five strategies that could save your life. Yeah. Look, the, the, I think that's the one where you talk about fortifying the home or was that a different one? Yeah, that's fortifying the home. Yeah. yeah. So that one, sometimes uh, we do promotions and you get free when you join the grad program. So if you're not a grad program member, go check get us otg.com. That's get sotg.com. Check that and see if the book is available for you when you join. Um, but anyway, when I was reading that, it, it kind of makes it clear as to why some criminals like in a neighborhood, why they would choose a specific house versus the other homes, right? Cause it's the most likely target. And you can tell by the tips that you give in that book, it's like, okay, how do I make my house look like a very bad target for this douchebag? But anyway, it says police have said that the homeowner did not know the man and it's not clear why he was in the neighborhood. Investigators believe that the two men got into an altercation outside the home first. Um, police said that the homeowner was outside on his property located in the 11400 block of Waples Mill Road in Oakton when he first encountered the man. Curry so this, said, this freakazoid who doesn't live in the neighborhood is in your front yard. I would be out there like, why is this stranger out in my front yard or my driveway? Are you my neighbor? No. No. Then you go fornicate yourself. Curry said, quote, when he encountered this man, there was some sort of interaction that led to an altercation. He retrieved a firearm from inside the home, and at some point, the man made entry into the home with an object that appears to be a large landscaping rock. Mm. The homeowner then fired and shot the man. On Friday, police shared what they believed led to the shooting. Says the homeowner saw Santos on his property and asked him to leave. Santos then allegedly assaulted the homeowner with a stick. There you go. When the homeowner tried to retreat inside his home, Santos tackled him and the homeowner was injured. The homeowner got inside his home and grabbed his gun. I wonder what would happen if he would have had his gun on him. Ah, you just stole my thunder. Sorry. Stop. You're stealing my thunder. (laughs) Santos came into the home with a large landscaping rock and lunged at the homeowner. The homeowner shot Santos. Curry said officers responding to the scene rendered immediate medical treatment. <laughs> I wonder if they did CPR, but Santos died on the scene. <gasps> they did CPR and then he died anyway. Detectives said the homeowner family, the homeowner's family, including two kids, were inside the home when the shooting happened. Hmm. Seven News obtained dispatch audio that describes a 911 call made by the homeowner's wife. Caller advised her husband fired his gun and shot someone that was approaching. Investigators said that there was one call, or one other call to the police from that neighborhood early in the day on Wednesday. There was a call for service earlier in the day where the man was seen in the area. So, the so dude, this, this scumbag was scoping out the neighborhood. And when officers responded, he was not found at the time. Mm. Neighbors described their street as what? It's typically quiet and peaceful. It's that not bad things don't happen here. Yeah, we understand the investigation is ongoing, but we really need to know more about it. One neighbor told Seven News, "We really want to know who this guy was. We want to know more details." Well, he, they they've got the dude. Uh, he's there, so um, now they know. The neighbor also told they told Seven News that. Uh, she knows the homeowner. Yes, we know them. Very nice guy and very good lady. Small kids, just a very good man. We're so sorry to hear this. It's terrible. Mm. So let there's so, so many lessons to be learned from this. And as you guys are, if you're dedicated students of the gun and uh, you've been here for a while, you're you're in your seats and you're squirming. You're like, ah, squirm, squirm, squirm. You're like, oh, I know what he's going to say. I know what he's going to say. And you can't wait for me to say it. So I'm going to say it. Carry your freaking gun. How about that? How about they? 
Lee. Um, meet me outside. Yeah, why don't Catch you me outside? Why don't you clash me outside? How about they? Um, Police did confirm neighbors reports that the man who was killed knocked on the door of another nearby home prior to the deadly encounter. Yep. Neighbors said that the homeowner did not know the man and did not open the door. Uh, so I got a question for you guys. Uh, if you see a freak like skulking around in your neighborhood, are you armed when you go to, to talk to the freak skulking around in your neighborhood or not armed? This is, this is interesting because it contradicts what they said earlier in the story. Which one? Which is this menu out of my face. Get this menu out of my face. <sighs> is that what you told the waiter? Yes. Menu out of my face right now. All right. It says somewhere around here. <laughs> Are you sure? Police did respond to an initial call about Santos Wednesday. Officers found him, which earlier in the story said they did not find him, but there was no crime. Santos refused to speak to police and walked away from the area. When the second call happened, police did not find Santos. So oh, so three total calls. Oh, so that, that's it. That's another one. Okay. okay. So. Number one, carry your freaking gun. If you have your pants on, carry your gun. If there's a freakazoid prowling around in your yard, before you go outside to confront the freak, carry your gun. Uh, I need to say something to the audience. Go ahead. In regards to if you have your pants on. I'm not going to get into details on why I was wearing this, but I was in a reindeer outfit with no pants on, and I had a gun on me. So That's right. He was doing the no pants dance. Uh, but, yeah, kids... So I got an idea. Carry your freaking gun. Uh, number two, this could be two or three. I don't know. It, it'll be uh, the well. That never happens here. We live in a safe neighborhood. I'm not paranoid like you. I don't think I need to have a gun on me because I'm not paranoid like you. Because where I live, it's a safe neighborhood. Okay. What's that? So random lunatics just can't show up in your neighborhood and start prowling around because there's a sign on the corner that says, this is a quiet, nice neighborhood. We have neighborhood watching progress. So you better, better not be here. Yeah. Um, and then the other one is... You don't need guns. That's why we have the police. We have the police that you, 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 that's the police's job. Uh, the police actually, uh, either it, depending on where you live, either they won't or they can't do anything to help you. Sometimes it's they won't. Sometimes it's they can't. Now, as a popo, I can tell you that this dude that says, all right, first of all, it says he refused to speak to them and walked away I'm like, ha, ha, uh, no, no, no. But in the defense of what or I'm going to say to what? To be fair, to be fair to, to modern police officers. Here's the deal. Santos obviously is some kind of, not white of like a white Irish descent guy, right? So chances are really good that uh, this Mr. Santos, Eduardo Santos of Herndon, uh, is an illegal. So if, if you get into a tussle, you're you're the popo, and you get into a tussle with this illegal from uh, whatever Guadalajara, right? And uh, then something happens and either you shoot him or whatever he dies. Now you're wrong. Now you're the bad guy and everyone, they're going to burn down the city because of, of you. Right? So if you're a popo, what we've done in, the, in America is we've put the exi the people who still want to be cops. We put them in a position where they know, see, it's not that they think maybe, they might get in trouble. No, they they fully understand. They know that if they do anything proactive, chances are you as the citizenry and the scumbag Democrats that you allow to uh, inhabit your state 
in city and, you know, your county offices, they'll burn you. So as a cop, what do you do? Now, when I was a cop, if I would have gotten a the uh, hey, there's a weirdo prowling around our neighborhood call, I wouldn't have just let him walk away. Right. That you're like, well, we said, hey, come here, buddy. And he's like, nope. And he walked away. And I was like, well, I guess he doesn't want to talk to me. Dispatch, I'm done. Would you say he, he walked away? Him? What would you do? Um, I would put myself between him and the, you know, here's the thing. Uh, at very least, as a police officer, when you're investigating a suspicious person, you have the right or the authority to ask them to identify themselves. Um, and let, let's let's face facts, though. Here's the reality of the situation. If somebody is completely innocent and they're not stalking around looking to commit a robbery or break in or whatever, and you say, hey, buddy, what's up? And they're like, oh, I'm just my cousin lives here, whatever. See, the thing is, most normal criminals know enough to lie to you. Mm -hmm. they, they're experienced enough to lie to you and say, oh, my cousin, my cousin lived down the street. You have a cousin? Yeah, he lived down the street. Oh, what's your cousin's name? <laughs> oh, hey, you're race A. I didn't say it. My cousin. So you go talk to your cousin. But uh, yeah, the idea that this dude, they're like, hey, buddy, uh, we need to talk to you. And he's like, nope, flips him off and walks away. And you're like, well, I guess we did our job. 1098 or whatever. Uh, <laughs> and then they get a second call. Hey, there's a weirdo prowling around our neighborhood. And they're like, and they show up and they're like, well, we didn't see him. So I'm 1098. I'm back in service or whatever the 10 code is for back in service. So next thing you know, you know, Mr. Smith here sees his freakazoid in his front yard or his driveway or whatever. And he goes out to confront him and the guy's like, Blah! and he attacks him with a stick and then he like knocks him down and, and so the dude makes it into the house retrieves his gun and shoots the dude so the good news for the people of where was this in virginia uh, oakton the good news for the people of oakton is that the suspect is now worm food so he's not going to do that anymore so that that is the good news, because if he wouldn't have been worm food, what would have happened was he would have been arrested. He would have been charged. They would have released him. And then he would have been out on the street until his trial date. Then he would have gone away, maybe if he got convicted and then gone right back to doing what he was doing previously. So that's not going to happen now because Mr. Smith uh, smoked this joker. Uh, and he needed to be smoked. Sometimes jokers need to be smoked, and that's just the way the world is, man. But uh, big lessons. Number one, carry your gun. And, you know, our, our bros at Crossbreed make that so freaking easy Sweet. to do. Uh, number two, the police are not going to save you. They're not going to save you. Uh, it's not the job of the police to save you, and they either, in certain circumstances, they, they, they won't or they can't. And uh, the third one is this flush this notion of we live in a good neighborhood and things like that don't happen here. Things like that happen everywhere. So just flush that crap out of your mind and understand that you're not going to know when you're nominated. You know, you, it could be it could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be next week. But, you know, when you, you least ex it, what is it when you least expect it? You're, you're elected. elected. That's right. When you least expect it. You're elected. Was that James? I think the first mm -hmm. time I heard that was from James. James, uh, James actually interviewed uh, John Willis because John had to pull some people out of a burning building. Remember? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. He was on his way home. and He's like, oh, crap, that house on fire. Oh, crap, there's people in it. So he pulled people out of a burning building because uh, he's a righteous dude. Nice guy. So uh, there's that. Uh, and also the fourth one that we didn't really talk about is uh, don't bring a, uh, if you bring a rock to a gunfight. Uh, you bring a first you should bring a gun to a gunfight sticking a rock uh and uh it, 
You should so bring. A- imagine <laughs> if if the homeowner would have had a pepper ball gun. So this dude's like using a five pound landscaping rock to smash your skull in. Stop! I'm gonna shoot you with this pepper ball gun. Poof, poof, poof. You know that somebody who's under the influence of OC, if they're on top of you. They're still going to smash your skull in under the influence of OC. Yeah, they're, they're still going to smash your skull in. Now, when they're done smashing in your skull, they're going to be they're going to cry a lot and they're going to be annoyed and it's going to be uncomfortable for them. But they're still going to smash in your skull. It's like the bear that you use the full can of bear spray on and it still ate you later on. It's going to go away and be really annoyed. Um you're still going to be dead. So there you go. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, This week coming up on Student of the Gun University podcast, it is a short form, single topic, easy to digest uh, podcast platform show. And we're going to talk about the road to mastery. So if you'd like to hop your happy butt onto the road of mastery, or the road to mastery. Well, Just I'll go to I'll, SOTGU.com. Yeah, SOTGU. You to oh, nice. SOTGU.com. You click the uh, listen now button or listen to the show or whatever the button says. I'll go look at it. It says right listen now. louder, biatches. It's SOTGU.com. It says listen to the show. I click it and it takes listen right to down there. the show. Da, da. Oh, listen yeah. So you do show. four pillars of combat four weeks in a row. And then the next one that you just mentioned is the road to mastery. Yes. You should be listening. You should be sharing. You should be liking and thumbs upping and harding and whatever it is that your thing does. Oh, uh, so there you go. All right. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Love you tomorrow. Uh, the bonus hour. Yeah, Thursday's bonus hour. We're going to talk about veterans acting like clowns. Oh, oh, but veterans are sacred. They're like elementary school teachers. You can't criticize veterans ever because they're sacred. Well, that's exactly what I'm going to (laughs) do. Because there are no sacred cows in this world. And uh, you are be judged by your actions and your behavior, not your intentions. So we're talking about veterans acting like clowns. We're gonna uh, we've got a play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Yes, indeed, stupid games, stupid prizes. We're gonna talk about leadership lessons, and uh, we're gonna have a fighting fitness for you. And you're gonna make want to make sure that you're there for that. So if you'd like to be there. For the bonus hour tomorrow, well, Jared's going to tell you how you can do it. Super easy. Go to GetSOTG.com and join there. GetSOTG.com. Follow the instructions. Get in on it, and then you can be part of the cool kids, and you can listen to the bonus hours. All right. Until we're together again, I want you to remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.